I think when you look around the Noongar community or any community, it's one of the cycles that's pretty hard to do these days. You know, you're going to go down and drive down the road and you'll see walking people, you know. And it's hard, very hard, you know, to get your head around things, you know. I mean, he, one stage there he had a job in the hall and working, you know, and then he was proud of it. You know, he, he had a couple of jobs. As you get older, you know, I think he had a bit of a hard time with the police, you know. And one stage there they locked him up over the weekend and for walking home. They kept him there all weekend. You know, and then they turned around a charge, they couldn't find a charge for him. You know, and those, those sort of things that got to him, you know, the, the authority of the law, they just kept hounding him, you know. I mean, he spent a lot of time, he spent a few years in jail too, you know, as he got older, you know, he tried to break. But one thing I found that, you know, he just, he just couldn't um, break that cycle of drugs. And then when he did come to me, you know, cause he, he was living with his girlfriend at the time. And through the years, he's, he's, he's got two boys, Malachi and Tyreek. They, they're big fellas, they're big boys. Um, you know, he, he, he was started to start to get to know them, you know. He'd pick him up on the weekend and take him out, you know, buy him presents and that. Um, before this all happened, he went out and bought all his presents for his boys for last year's Christmas. Um, yeah. And that weekend he got locked up. He came home here. And we, you know, and he was talking about doing himself in, you know, and I, I, I took him to the doctors. And they advised me to take him to Royal Perth Hospital and then put him in there, you know, and so they put him in for a couple of days and then I got a phone call that Friday morning from the doctor, the doctor told, they said to me, so we're going to keep him in over the weekend, probably leave him out on a Tuesday. I said, that's good, that's fair enough. And, yeah, and we need to monitor him. Uh, at that point, stage, they never, they never diagnosed him, you know. Um, I, didn't, I went and see him on a Thursday. I said, what are they giving you? He said, no, nah, nothing, Dad, they just give me sleeping tablets to help me sleep. They never said anything, he said, no. Nah. By Friday afternoon, they, they um, let him go. You know, I went and picked him up. Um, he came home and he was on the edge, you know, and he was... So anyway, we... Um, but he got on the drink and he, you know, he, uh, he had a lot on his mind. So he come back Saturday morning and I put a feed on for us. We sat over all day watching movies. Then Sunday morning I went to church and I had to go and see some, one of my nephews. He got to pass with his father that very same morning. And he, he came with me. It was like this pretty hot day, and he had a few beers with my other nephew, and you know, everything was good. You know. And I was coming home, and it was, his mood changed, you know, his mood swings. And that's what I couldn't work out. And yeah, well, I was driving, and and he started talking about it, I was like, you know, talking about killing himself. And I pulled up on the freeway just to tell him to settle down and behave himself, you know. And I wasn't speeding or anything, I was just sat in the emergency lane. And I just come off the, come off the freeway, up the freeway, off the side road. I moved across because we had to go under the bridge. Next thing I had the door open. And then they, when they took him to Royal Perth, they, about half an hour later, they took me. 
I did that, took my blood test, breath, breathalyzer, couldn't find nothing. Um, well, that time, his mum and that was already there, and his sister. I just, I just couldn't find the words. When I got up, <coughs> when I wake up next morning, I got up early, very early, because I couldn't sleep. And, um, and, and people who, you know, normally come and see me, was right on my doorstep here, you know. Um, you know, I never think, you know, and that's how I come I uh, met Megan. Uh, Megan came uh, early in the day. And, uh, yeah, she, she sat by me for the, stood by me for, uh, nearly for about four weeks. And she helped me arrange things, you know. Uh, me and his, his mother and how we would want to go about raising money and you know because we had nothing by the uh, the months of that we had a uh, we had money you know we done a bit of fundraising you know our family and friends had pitched in to help you know which was good you know at the end of the day we had you know, we buried him in a Port Adelaide coffin, because he married back for Port Adelaide. You know, I thought he might tuck around for me, you know. So when I got a holy look after me, and be there for his boys, you know. Because he'd like to make that connection with them. And every now and then they ring me up. He was a good boy. A bit hard at it. But he'll do anything for you.